Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. Uh, today we're here for something a little bit different. I have been just so excited about watching uh, various different channels here for uh, OTJ Draft, and I just want to try it myself. So yeah, I'm going to jump in here to a premiere uh, draft for the new set, and really excited just to try things out. Uh, if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing my channel with a friend of yours who might also like it. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much for coming back. I really do appreciate you, and you guys are the backbone of the channel. So thank you so much for what you do. Um, there will be a, a link in the description of this video here. Um, I, th I think I'm going to be able to track all my picks and then the, uh, the deck list as well on untap.gg. So I'll see if I can have that up for you. And hopefully I can also get a copy of the list on moxfield.com. So that'll be in the description. And then I'll also have in the description um, a couple different playlists of mine. I have a Road to Rank 1 for Standard with uh, Mono White Humans, um, a couple different Standard events with Mono Red and Mono, mono White, and then um, the last Qualifier Weekend event and just some other um, collab drafts I've done with Ace MTG. So check those out if you're interested. Um, also want to give a big shout out here to my first member for the channel, Kibo. Thank you so much again for your support. Um, if you are considering supporting my channel, this is a great way to do it. You do get access to uh, early access to my content and then also get included here in the shout outs here at the beginning of my videos. So it's a great way to help support me and support the channel. And here is how you do it. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. This will be my first solo draft of the new format and super excited. So let's see what we get. It's been so much fun watching Paul Cheon. He's one of my favorite drafters. Um, I've also really enjoyed watching Numat the Nummy and Nikolai Bolas' channel. All just excellent, excellent content creators and drafters. And so, yeah, super excited to try it myself. This set just seems like it has so many ridiculous bombs. All right, let's take a look. So first pick here, we've got Smuggler's Surprise for the rare. Um, this is definitely a decent value card. You can go ahead and get um, like a couple creatures or maybe like a land and a creature back into your hand just off the three mana spree. And then if you have lots of mana, you can go ahead and try to put them onto the battlefield and then make some of your creatures indestructible and hexproof. So that seems like a decent value card. Green is also one of the best colors. Um, other great cards here, we've got Skewer the Critics is decent removal in red. Um, Giant Beaver is a solid card. Badlands Revival can be good. It's a double color though. I, I don't want to commit super early. Otherwise, it's a fairly weak pack. Uh, you've got Slick, uh, Slick Shot Lock Picker in blue for like kind of like the blue red deck. I haven't really seen that come together too much though. And then I suppose Bounding Felidar can be sort of like a late game thing in like the blue white deck. But I'm going to go with Smuggler Surprise here. Haven't had a chance to try this out, and I think it could be quite powerful. Okay, going into pack two, we have... Um, there's a couple decent value cards here. You've got, like, Ruthless Lawbringer, which can get you a little bit of value if you have, like, sacrifice targets. Um, but I don't want to move into double color just yet. Stop Cold is a decent removal. It's, it is a little bit late and a little bit expensive. Otherwise, you have uh, Thought Season Black. You can just kind of take whatever they've got, but it can be a little bit dead in the mid game to late game. And then Thunder Salvo is fine. Um, not, it, it's not able to hit like super 
high value creatures, but certainly decent. Taiwa Keen could be good, um, but I think this is more of a constructed card. I'm actually looking at Plan the Heist here. I think this is gonna be just like a nice value card. And I think it's a little better than just sort of the straight removal. It's sort of a nice three for one if you can get it to go. You don't wanna to have too many cards that sort of don't affect the board, but I think this is one that I could make an exception for. Okay, in this pack here, we are seeing a lot of good white. You've got Prosperity Tycoon is probably the best card in the pack. Uh, the best common here though is certainly Hard Bristle Bandit, and it does fit the color that we're in with green. So I think I'm gonna take that. Uh, but if that wasn't here, I would certainly take the Prosperity Tycoon and it's worthwhile just to realize that there is some white that's sort of coming our direction, possibly also some green. And then Desperate Bloodseeker is just like a very solid black two drop, but I don't wanna move into that just yet. So we're gonna go ahead and take the Hard Bristle Bandit here and maybe keep our eyes open to white. Okay, now we have some good green coming, which is great. So there is Back for More as a green black card, which is a really powerful late game sort of pseudo bomb where you can have get your, your big creature back from um, your graveyard and then have it fight something. So I don't think I want to commit this early to that, um, although we certainly could. We've got Giant Beaver is solid. Raucous Entertainer is a good two drop here in green. Trained Erinx is also probably like the best white common two drop. So that is worth noting that like white does seem to be coming, but so does green. So I'm kind of like torn between like Erinx here and Raucous Entertainer. I think I'm just gonna stick here with Entertainer and just sort of see how it goes. They're pretty decently comparable in power level. I think the Erinx might be a little better but since we've already got the green, I think I'm just gonna stick with that. And now we're seeing a lot of black coming. This is a really nice gift here of an unfortunate accident. Um, jailbreak scheme is certainly fine, but I'm by no means married to blue, and there's a lot of black coming here. So I think we should sort of recognize that and go for this unfortunate accident, uh, which, you know, hard removal is really great, and there's so many crazy bombs that I think we just wanna go with that. So yeah, maybe, who knows, maybe the back for more will table. I doubt it, but it's possible. Um, this is a, a pretty easy throw from the saddle. Probably one of the best green commons, if not the best green common. I suppose it's up there with Hard Bristle Bandit. Um, so yeah, otherwise, if that wasn't here, you know, we could try to do dance. If we wanted to go like multicolor, otherwise probably just like take like the Lush Oasis. But yeah, I'd be happy with if, you know, Morning Surprise came back. Um, I guess we'll see. Um, yeah, here we have Spinewood Paladin is a really, really solid, just sort of mid-range creature. Um, Mourner Surprise is, again, perfectly fine, but we've got the most green. I kind of want to stick to it. Voracious Varmint is definitely a decent two-drop, but I think we've got time to pick up some twos. We've already have two, um, two power creatures, or sorry, two creatures that are two mana cost, so happy to pick up the Spinewood Paladin here. All right, now we're seeing a little bit more black, and I suppose the jailbreak scheme is also decent. Um, unfortunate accident, I think, was a pretty late signal, so I think I'm gonna go with the black here. Skullduggery is a, nice, is a decent trick. Um, neutralize the guards is also worth noting, though, because this could be fairly decent since it just hits the opponent's creatures as sort of like a um, mid-game trick that also surveils, which can be pretty powerful, especially in green-black, so I don't know. I think I'm just gonna go with the Skullduggery here, just because it's so cheap, but it's worth noting that the other card might be a little bit more powerful, perhaps. Um, Vengeful Townfolk is the best card in this pack, but it is not in our color. Um, although Sterling Hound is like not that interesting, and I, I, I don't think these black cards are great. So I'm just gonna spec on the Townsfolk here to see if, you know, maybe we open like a white bomb or something in the next pack. Okay, that's a late Thunder Salvo also. Um, Soured Springs is, is another possibility here where we could kind of keep ourselves a little bit open. So I think it's between Soured Springs and Thunder Salvo. I think there's enough other cards we've seen here that, I mean, this is a late, eh, maybe I'll just take the Salvo. This is, 
I'm not sure about that pick. I think maybe it would have been better to take the land, but just in case, again, we open like a really nice red bomb, we'll be open to that. And here, I'm definitely going to take the Bloodseeker. I think it's better than the Rooftop Assassin. And I'm not that interested in the um, the Wanted Griffin. Here, happy to pick up a one of the lands. And I think that Jailbreak Scheme is a little bit better here between the two. Um, we have a little bit more black, so maybe we should take the Fake Your Own Death, but I don't think it's that great of a trick. It's, it's fine. But if we do end up in blue, I'd rather have the Jailbreak Scheme. Okay, so pack two. Um, Free Strider Lookout is definitely a very, very solid green rare here. A 3-3 three, three Reach that can, whenever we commit a crime, look at the top five cards of our library and put a land into play tapped. So not like an incredible bomb, but it, it definitely is a very solid creature with a decent ability. Other things to consider, Cactus Sure Shot, or Cactus Folk Sure Shot is pretty good. Can certainly set us up for um, a decent like red-green deck if we want to go that direction. I think I'm just going to take the safe pick here. Otherwise, it would be like Mystical Tether. So probably one of those three. Um, Emergent Haunting is another good card here, but again, I'm just going to stick with the green. Try to stay open as long as I can. Okay, we're going to have to start making some decisions. Um, here we have Explosive Derailment in red, if we want to go that direction. We only have one red card, but it is a decent removal. We have Vault Plunder, which is a good two for one. That might be our pick. And then we also have This Town Ain't Big Enough, which is a really nice kind of bounce spell and both jailbreak scheme and plan the heist are pretty good and blue green is certainly a nice combo um, i guess we have like unfortunate accident black blood seeker skullduggery this is kind of close um i think i'm going to go with a vault plunder here i think that green black is a pretty good combo we already have some black and yeah, I think I'm just going to go that direction. Although Mar Marauding Sphinx is a really good, really good card here. It's probably the best card in this pack. Um, I guess it's between that and like Buried in the Garden. There's another Explosive Derailment here. So I think that maybe the ship has kind of sailed on red since we've kind of picked up like the Vault Plunderer. I think probably what I'm going to do here is spec on Buried in the Garden. It, I could see us maybe getting a little bit of like a white splash. And I think this is still a very powerful effect. Okay, so what have we got here? Giant Beaver is probably maybe one of the strongest cards here. We could definitely start picking up some, some land though. Um, let's see, in green we have the possibility of getting some mounts here, so that could be good with Bucolic Ranch. But I think Conduit Pylons might be the safe pick here. I guess we could pick up like Voracious Varmint, but I think if we're gonna have a chance at going three color, I think I wanna pick up the Pylons, like the first copy. Okay, so here, I think this is a pretty easy consuming Ashes. Um, if we wanted to kind of do a lot of splashing, we could look at like the Heath or maybe the Deputy, although I think Rambling Possum is a better card, but Consuming Ashes is the strongest card in this pack by a lot. Okay, really happy to see Treasure Digger and Hard Bristle Bandit, but I think Bandit is just the better card. And there's also a nice Desert's Dew, some good removal here. I think I'm just gonna go with Bandit though, because it just, keeps us like the most open. So I think we're gonna look at making like a black green base deck and then, yeah, murder is a really nice pickup here. Um, it's funny cause I'm used to like having murder be like a really bad removal spell in the last set in MKM cause of all the ward, but here it's, it's quite amazing. So I think we're gonna look at going like base black green and then maybe splashing into white or something like that. Okay, could certainly take the Festering Gulch. Um, there are some really good cards here, though, like Throw from the Saddle, again, is really great. Rambling Possum, 
how are we doing on our creature counts? Uh, we already only have eight creatures. I think I'm just going to take the possum here. Um, even though we could pick up... It's just like a decent solid creature. We're pretty low on creatures. And I think we can get some more removal here. So not sure if that's right, but just want to start filling out some creatures. And for that same reason, I'm just going to go ahead and grab the Drover Grizzly here. Decently replaceable, but it's certainly a decent creature. Okay, very happy to see Desperate Bloodseeker, one of the better two drops. And yeah, not really interested in splashing either of these. Fake Your Own Death is perfectly fine. Okay, happy to see Voracious Varmint. We can certainly run that. So now we've got a pretty decent mix of creatures. We're up to 12. So yeah, I think from here, we can be a lot more discerning on our picks. I like Annie joins up because it does uh, five damage to target creature or planeswalker. Um, the problem is it's, it's sort of a double splash for us. So I think I'm just gonna take the much more robust pick here in Spinewood Paladin. Nothing else here that's super exciting for us. I think most other things are gonna be a double splash like Eartha Joe and, Hypoth and Hypothesis are the other two like quite strong cards, but they're in two splash colors. And we could get the Bandit's Hall, but it's just not that exciting. And I think Spinewood Paladin is just really good. Okay, here I think I am, Never mind. I was going to say I was going to pick up Lassoed by the Law, except there's a Consuming Ashes, and that's <laughs> just as good, but it's in our colors. So really happy to pick up Consuming Ashes here. And now I think we're just going to go ahead and cut the blue and the red. We might splash into white, but if our deck is good enough, we can probably just go like two color. Unless we see like some insane bomb. I'm a huge fan of Free Strider Commando. Um, Servant and Stinger is also very good. And let's see, how many creatures do we have on two? Um, yeah, Servant, Servant and Stinger is actually probably better for what we're doing. We've got double Hard Bristle Bandit. I mean, this can be a 5-5, five five, which is really nice. I just love Commando, it's so good. I think even if the Stinger it might be a little bit better, I just want the Commando here. And that's probably my bias. Okay, now we can pick up Desert's Dew. Um, Cause I think we have enough twos. Let's actually, I'm gonna change the view here. Just wanna see what our layout looks like. Yeah, we're doing fine on twos. We've got definitely enough. Desert's Dew is just going to be another another nice removal here. Let's see, we've got two Consuming Ashes, Murder. Otherwise, I'd like spec on like the gem, but it's a little bit outside of our colors. Okay, so we've got Riku of Many Paths. That's double splash, so it's not very interesting for us. Um, <laughs> Wrangler the Damned is really good too, but also a double splash. So not really a lot here for us. I guess we can pick up like the Tumblewood Rising. Um, Forlorn Flats actually, you know, we might grab the Flats in case we want to go with a Spirit in the Garden. So I think I'm going to pick that up. We could grab another Skullduggery here. Thornado is also decent removal. Um, Let's see, Contractor is decent as well. Ankle Biter is fine. But I think that this is probably maybe the best value. Okay, wow, another Consuming Ashes, are you kidding? Okay. Probably not running Fake Your Own Death. Super happy to grab another Commando. We could grab the Lush Oasis here, but I don't think we're running blue. And yeah, probably not running the Sandstone Verge either. Although I don't think there's basically any chance we're running this Buzzard. 
varmint we might run. Yeah, I don't think we're running the raven. I've heard that this raven is better than it looks, but I'm kind of skeptical. Like, the 1-2 just doesn't look that interesting. Maybe, like, in red black, this could be good, but I don't think it's that great in this deck. Okay, and that is the deck. Let's have a look and see what we've got. I think with the, just the only, like the single buried in the garden, we probably don't need to splash here. Just make our deck a little bit cleaner just by running two colors. So let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. So that said, we're not gonna need the Forlorn Flats. We could probably run the pylons here just to like help fix our our own mana here since we've got like triple consuming ashes. So maybe that's okay. All right, let's take a look. What are we short? So we've got 46 cards, a couple cards to cut. Buzzard is really on two. So we've got, yeah, Vault Plunderer, Contractor. Question is, do we have like creatures to sack for this? We don't make a lot of tokens, so this is maybe not quite as good. I think it's better in like a deck that has more like black white it's probably better there yeah line link breaker i'm not super excited about i mean that would be a decent card to go with the contractor but i think maybe i'm just going to cut both yeah we've got a really nice set of removal here we've got let's see what do we have desert stew skullduggery from the saddle yeah we've got a really nice stack of removal here one two three four five eight removal spells and then we've got this smuggler's surprise so nine 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 creature spells although this kind of goes and finds creatures and i kind of want to try it so i guess maybe we cut a piece of removal if we if we need to so right now we've got 18 creatures and we've still got a couple cuts to make You know, with this much removal, like, Buzzard actually goes up. If you, like, plot this on two and then, like, kill whatever they do on three, can be pretty good. Um, Grizzly's probably one of the weaker cards. I like all of our other threes. I like the Spinewood Paladins as sort of our top end. This might be a 16 land deck, though. I mean, we've got Double Hard Bristle Bandit. What's the mana breakdown? 50-50 exactly. I guess like the green helps us get the black. We have like these three consuming ashes. We want to make sure we have enough black, but maybe we just cut the pylons. I could see like running maybe like the pylons um, and cutting like one of the basics, but might just go 8-8 eight, eight instead. What else do we cut? I like all the Bloodseekers, the Bandits. Uh, we can probably cut a Voracious Varmint, actually. I like having like access to one of these to get rid of an enchantment, but probably don't need two. Entertainer seems good. So now we're probably looking at like maybe cutting, um, probably go down to like one Buzzard and then maybe cut like one piece of removal. So, which one? <laughs> I think I wanna keep all the hard removal and then maybe we can cut like Probably Desert's Dew, I think, is maybe the weakest one here. I mean, Skullduggery is nice because it's so cheap. 
and desert to do we don't really have any deserts so this is 40 the only question here is do we run the pylons I mean it will help a little bit question is do we cut a swamp or actually never mind we've got that 17 land so I think maybe we just do this and run the buzzard, or we bring in the desert's dew again. So 15 creatures, yeah, I could see. Just running desert's dew. And then do we want these pylons? We've got double hard bristle bandit to help fix with color. Don't really have any other double green though. We definitely have some early black. Triple consuming ashes. I mean, I'd probably cut a forest for it, but I think I'm just gonna go eight, eight. All right, let's give this a whirl. We have a really healthy amount of removal, four pieces of hard removal, um, decent creatures, I think, fair amount of lifelink. I kind of like the mix we've got here. And I certainly would be open to like splashing for bombs, but when you fall into like a, just a two color deck, it feels pretty good. All right, opening hand looks great. Can go banded on two, and then double spell on three with Bloodseeker and Entertainer. Or actually, now we could just we could just plot Free Strider on on three. kind of like that actually um what do we want to do here we just go Spinewood. I think Spinewood is a little bit better than these kind of smaller spells. So let's just do that. <coughs> just play a casual 10 power on the board. Okay, let's just play out these two, I guess. I guess we'll attack first and sort of see what they do. And I'd rather have the Entertainer, so let's start with that one. I don't think we have any cards that bring back stuff for us, but um, it's typically better to mill ourselves, I think. I don't think we have any kind of combos with the graveyard, unfortunately, but, but they might, so <laughs> it's good to have options.
So unfortunately, we don't have enough mana to get the Sphinx because it's Ward 2, right? Yeah. That is unfortunate. I guess we can Skullduggery to make it a 2-4 and one of our creatures a 3-3. Three, three. So I guess we just get in with Free Strider Commando and then sort of set up. And I think we just Deserts do the Harrier Strix just to force them to spend mana to try to get this thing going. And I think let's do that now so that they don't have a chance to draw and discard. Oh god. With the Hard Bristle Bandit, actually, we would have had enough to... Oh. That's too bad. Yeah, I forgot if we... Consuming Ashes, the Sphinx, this would untap because of the committing a crime. Well, we can do that next turn. We'll know about that, I guess. Oh god, Marauding Sphinx number two. Whew. Okay, well the good news is now we can kind of blow them out. Um, so we'll tap for and target, and then we'll be able to use Bandit to untap and pay for the ward cost. So I think we attack with the Free Strider here, and then hopefully they don't have extra nonsense. I think this works. If this doesn't work, it's going to be awkward. Oh no. Woo! Okay, they actually conceded beforehand. I, I wasn't sure how the stacking was going to work. I think we would have had to pay the ward cost before he untapped. So that actually didn't work. But luckily, he didn't know that either. <laughs> so we got the win. Oh man, that was awkward. <clears throat> when in doubt, just like wait a little while and maybe your opponent will concede. <laughs> uh, yeah, we got our mana, got stuff to do. A little bit of a slow hand, but I think that's okay. We at least have all of our mana. I think what I like about this deck is it, it has a lot of really decent removal and it's pretty low to the ground. So here we're just going to go ahead and plot and definitely not offer the trade. I'm sure our opponent would love to trade with our possum.
Oh wow, we can return this to our hand and just keep gaining life if we need to. Yeah, but I'd rather have it out right now. It's good to know we can do that though. Hostile investigator. Discard a card, sure. They're definitely getting tons of value here. So because these have trample, what we can do is we can consuming ashes after they block. Um, I think we just attack with both spine woods and see what they do and then kind of go from there. If they don't block, we can also just smuggle or surprise. So I think here we just get rid of the investigator just because, um, oh, but they, I suppose they could have like snakeskin veil. I wonder if they've got that. Oh, the other thing I suppose we could do, we could make our creatures with power four good or hexproof and indestructible. That's pretty funny. Um, yeah, let's do that. That's gonna cost, I guess if we spend four mana, we can do that. Okay, so let's do this and this. It's actually a complete beating. <laughs> wow. Oh my God, that was a total beating. Yeah, they've got, I don't know if there's an in their deck, so I'm just going to mill myself here. I guess the Smuggler Surprise is kind of good with milling, self-mill, so we'll just kind of plan on milling ourselves. Cactarantula is not going to do it. All right, let's just go ahead and Consuming Ashes. Hopefully no snakeskin veil. Let's see, this thing is saddle one. Yeah, that'll work. Then we're gonna shove for a whole lot of nonsense here. Man, that smuggler's, uh, good lord. That was a complete beating blowout. Get two cards, two creatures, and blow out all of their team. Make our guys indestructible. Yeah. Okay, that card is very, very good. <laughs> I don't think it's always that good, but that was completely totally silly <sighs> um we're on the draw I'm not in love with this like I guess we have like a trick and an early two drop but if we don't see, I mean, realistically, like, 
two more land in the next couple draws, it's going to be pretty rough. I don't really like mulliganing either, though. So I think I think we can kind of keep this going for a while. Since we're on the draw, I think I'm going to try it. This might be a bit uh, a bit of a sketchy keep. But we've got double Bloodseekers. So there is that. Okay, well, we could use a forest at some point. Okay, milled two non land, that was great. I think we're happy to trade here. The plunder is making Skullduggery look very good. Okay, we could have used that forest, but at least we cleared a couple of other cards. So now I think we free strider commando here. I guess the other thing we could do is we could skullduggery, make this a 3-3, three, three, kill the plunderer, and then throw from the saddle and take out their charger. I mean, that is a pretty ridiculous. And this is representing seven damage, so. Hmm. It is blowing kind of a lot of tricks, but I think we get a decent attack and we buy ourselves some time. Yeah, because this would be a 4-4 four, four, and then... I think it's a good enough trick. Let's, let's try it out. Like, they're tapped out. Feels like a nice turn. It's like wipe their board, get a bunch of life. Oh god, Rakdos the muscle. Holy crap. Oh my lord. Whenever another... Sacrifice another creature. Okay, so they can get, become indestructible. Wow. All right, let's get some commandos going here. At least we've got 28 health. Now I think we just go, I suppose we could go for another commando here, or we could go for the Spinewood Paladin. <sighs> hmm. Making this come in as a 5-5 five five is pretty tempting. But we might need to just start racing. Yeah, I guess it's a bit more mana efficient to do it this way.
Well, that's kind of nice. We can do both of these. So yeah, I guess we just push with these. He might draw a bunch of cards, but I think that's okay. This thing doesn't untap, right? No, tap it, okay. Now we could have it come in as a 6-6. Six, six. I think it's also nice because our like three of our black removal spells exile. So even if it even if they make it indestructible, don't think it matters. Does it give it hexproof also? No, just indestructible. Yeah, I think we just sit here. gonna be a tough one um yeah because the problem is we don't have trample so he'll just like block and sack and then make his guy indestructible i think we just unfortunately have to sit Okay, so now if we get him with both our 5-5 five, five, and 6-6, six, six, he can make this thing a 4-5, right? Just a 4-5. I think we just got to fight through it. Now he's going to use Rakdos to get some more card value, potentially. Oh, but he can only do it once per turn, so he wants to be safe, that makes sense.
Ha, <laughs> the War of the Top Decks. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't uh, use the Boneyard Desecrator last turn on the little 1-1 one -one that he chumped with. And there it is. Okay, that should... So, he can double sack and make this thing a 5-6, which is worth noting. I guess let's see if he does it. We could also attack and try to, like, blow him out by getting him to sack. So if we do it this way, this is, like, a 4-5 and a 2-2. Two -two. If we full send, he can kill this, chump here, take 4, go to 4. We could also just, like, full send and see what he does. It's not a lot different, though. Because then he just makes good blocks. Hmm. Otherwise, we just attack with like our 6 6, get him to block and sack. But then I think we waste precious time. <sighs> yeah, I think I'm just going to go for it. Now I think we just full send. He can eat our free strider lookout, but then we're pushing some damage here. And if he wants to double block our 6-6, six, six, then we push lethal. Still pushing lethal here, unless he has something else. Nice, got there. Man, Rakdos the muscle. What a beating. Oh. Definitely made the game interesting, that's for sure. Okay, this is an interesting keep. I suppose we can go like Smuggler Surprise on three to try to like mill some lands to fix our mana. Yeah, I guess I'm okay with keeping for that reason. It's a little slow. Okay, well there we go. That works too. Patient Naturalist is a great card. Really, really good. You want to trade? I'll do it all day.
Ooh, that was a nice one. We are going to need another black, though. Ooh. Spicy. Um, I think we have to take this here just so we can try to double block the Cactarantula. So now I think we just plot the Free Strider to have a blocker for that if these things die to a trick. He almost certainly has some kind of removal or something here, but don't have a lot of options. Okay, let's see the color of your trick. Otherwise, I guess we could just like block these two. We're still taking six, but we're less likely to get completely blown out. Yeah. So all you have to do now is kill one of our guys, and then we're just super done. I think I like these blocks actually a little more. So if we can just draw into if we can just draw into a swamp, we can get our consuming ashes going. Yeah, that that feels pretty good. And then I think. He might be holding up like snakeskin veil, so let's maybe like get him on his upkeep. We could also try to block with smuggler's surprise. I kind of like that too. Or just go like spinewood paladin. But I think this is a good turn for a trick. So I think we just uh, just hold smuggler's surprise here. And if he wants to just trade, we're open to it. Yeah, we'll just pass, I think. That was pretty good. Okay, so now we've got seven mana. We can Smuggler Surprise for, let's see. I guess we can do Hexproof, and then we don't have enough to do like the whole thing. So all we need is really four mana for it. Yeah, I kind of want to do the attack here.
You could have removal here in response, certainly. Okay, lookout feels pretty good, and I guess actually the buzzard is decent. Now Buzzard will come in as a 3-2, um, which is kind of nice. What are your last two cards, I wonder? You could play out the Varmint here. I kind of like holding up Consuming Ashes in case there's some sort of weird nonsense. Okay, that's a nice one. Here we can play the Varmint in case they try to do like a double block. Don't know if he saw it. And he has a snakeskin veil. Do we want a consuming ashes here? Do we care? Yeah, I mean, he's down to one card. Like this way we just trade for Gardener. And then he's left with a Bloodseeker. No, I think we let it happen. I just want to hold our ashes in case he has some crazy bomb. Got there. Yeah, Free Strider Commando's just such a good card. Just being able to have a 5-5 five, five in a world of like 3-3s three, and 4-4s. Four, 4 now. Keep this because of the bandit. Certainly hoping to draw into a swamp would be great. <laughs> if they kill our bandit, we're in for some serious trouble. Hopefully that does not happen.
That is a really good card. Um, yuck. All right, let's get our plunder. Nice draw. Oh my god. Oh wow, this is trouble. Okay. Um Good rambling possum. What do we want to do here? Could also go like Bloodseeker plus Varmint <clears throat> and set up like a double block or we could plot the paladin. I think this is kind of a dangerous turn to not have more creatures though because if they try to get in we want to like be able to punish them for it i guess actually possum plus skullduggery is pretty good too though yeah i think that's maybe the play Here we go. Now the nice thing is Skullduggery is actually really good here because we can make this a 4-4 four four and kill one of their 3-1s. I can't use the extra mana though, unfortunately. I mean, all in all, this wasn't too bad. They definitely got some value, but that Skullduggery was really well placed. Now we can just drop Spinewood Paladin and start going to town. And I think we can start racing. I guess they, they push for seven. Hmm. We're trading four for seven. That doesn't really feel great. Otherwise, we're just like, I guess, trading possum for grizzly, which also isn't great. We've got another Spinewoods Paladin coming, so maybe it's okay. Yeah, I think we hold back here. Maybe just trade possum for grizzly if we have to. Yeah, let's I think we pass. Man, double summoner is crazy. Okay, beaver. We really need another black source. We could potentially plot the buzzard and then hopefully kill something next turn, or just play another Spinewoods Paladin here. I feel like we want Paladin just because like there's too many things that could go wrong. And I think I want to hold back the possum here one more turn. Like we're definitely playing a little bit defensive, but it's just partly because we can't really unload our hand yet.
Okay, we really needed that swamp so badly. Okay, now I feel a lot better now that we have access to consuming ashes. So... What's the play now? Um... I think we can start getting in with like rambling possum like if we trade that for their 4-4 i'm kind of fine with it we could plot the buzzard so that we can get the benefit of consuming ashes something next turn so maybe we plot buzzard and play varmint I guess we could get Bloodseeker out there too. Now we still have access to consuming ashes if they try to make like a big push next turn, but I think we can just like also develop our board here a little bit. Get some lands out of the way. And we've got a nice little healthy buffer of life over theirs. So we're not worried about like a crazy all in. I think if beaver attacks, we're definitely blocking though. Okay, now we have access to murder and consuming ashes. This is great. So I think we want to murder the paladin because ashes helps if it's a smaller creature, right? So yeah, we can murder the paladin and then play the buzzard. Attack with our four five and probably the blood seeker. Yeah, let's let's do it like that. Okay. So we'll kill the paladin. And now we can use the bristle bandit to saddle the possum. And then I think we want to attack with everybody except for the paladin. Now we play our buzzard for maximum value. And then we can use consuming ashes on the token. And then get the scry or the surveil. Is this thing an artifact? No. Okay, that'd be cool. Free Strider. Yeah, they're just going to pack it in. Nice. Okay, 5 and 0. Oh.
Another one of those hands. Um, this one, though, I don't think we keep. Yeah, we, all we have is Bloodseeker. <sighs> I mean, I guess we could keep it. If we draw, like, a single forest, we're set. Bloodseeker on two. I think I'm going to throw it back, though. I just I feel like it's a little bit too risky. This feels a lot better. We've got Desert's Dew to buy us time. I think we keep... I think we actually probably throw back Unfortunate Accident here because we need double black for it. And then we've got two other pieces of removal. people seem to not like the armadillo but i think it's actually pretty good in the like blue white deck i mean not good but it's playable i would say i mean definitely it's, it's a role player and it can do stuff in the late game and locks it down or holds it down in the early game <laughs> it's pretty great I want to get the big value out of Free Strider here, so I think I'm just going to go for Bloodseeker. So, a couple options. We could throw from the saddle to kill the possum. I mean, I guess we can do that next turn also. And then, yeah, we have a better chance of hitting land. So, I think let's just go for Free Strider here. And then, I guess next turn we can do that to try to hit land if, we still are, are, if we're still missing. I suppose we could have also attacked and like deserts do, but again, I just want to have this thing in play. Would you care to pump? So he's representing steer clear. So if we kill this thing first and then attack, I think we're good. So we throw from the saddle. Where do we want the counter? Probably on the Bloodseeker. Actually, I guess it's maybe a little bit better on the lookout because then it can at least trade with Armadillo. We don't get as much life this way, but I think it's okay. Oh wait, you know what? It didn't give it a counter, never mind. Yeah, we should have used the Bloodseeker for that. That was bad. So we could be up an extra three life. I thought it was a plus one plus one counter. I guess it's only if it's a mount. Yeah, that's pretty good. That is really good. So now we consuming ashes. I think just to deal with our 7-7. Seven, seven. Since we're at 16, I guess the other thing we could do is we could 
set up commando. But then we're taking a pretty big hit. I think it's safer just to get rid of that. Okay, no land. But we do get to surveil. Then at the very least we get to uh, push for a little bit of free damage. I guess, wow, they could make this thing an 8-4 next turn? Good lord. We go to 18, so we're not dead. Yep, they can make this thing an 8-4. Oh man, that's kind of funny. Okay, Cactarantula, sure. So a couple options. We could set up Commando here and then I guess like Desert Stew and I think it's just better to play Paladin though. Because we don't want to take another big hit. Yeah, this Armadillo is actually I think like legitimately a decent card. could they have they have like indestructible they could have I think we just I think we just triple block here just to like make sure it dies Okay, that works too. Hopefully they're all out of tricks. don't like this scry we're at 24 I think deserts do is probably best to take out their erinx since that first strike is pretty tough to deal with but the grizzlies also like it represents more power yeah the scry is decently powerful though hmm so if we draw something else, I think if we just, yeah, let's just play, play this as a 5-5 five five next turn. We're going to take a little bit of a hit here, but I think that's okay. So maybe now we can get them to saddle and then Desert's due in response. Okay, they're just going for it.
completely in top deck mode here. Oof, the ranch. Nasty. We are getting outvalued here. <clears throat> yeah, this Bucolic Ranch looks really good in their deck. Five, nine, eleven land. Let's see, are we dead? I think we might still be dead. Do you have any kind of removal? I guess we play it out, but. Let's see, how many? We're getting pretty low. I think we don't want to actually mill ourselves anymore. Yeah, they got four cards in hand. This is almost unwinnable. That'll do it. Yeah, I'm not really sure that we, we didn't really kind of, uh, we played decently well there, I think. Yeah, that Dance of the Tumpweeds, and well, the final showdown was super nasty. All right, five and one. Okay. Yeah, that uh, that bucolic ranch was pretty good. That and uh, one-sided uh, wrath is pretty good too. All right, opening hand looks good. We got double bandit, stuff to do. Take just more bandits, feels good. I guess we could also go for vault plunderer here. Opening up mana feels pretty good though. Hmm. Yeah, I think I just want more mana, honestly. Come on, land. <laughs> no land. OK, 
Okay, what do we got? Gin of Fool's Fall. All right. Could Buzzard plus Bloodseeker, or we could Free Strider Commando. Could also like attack and then Desert's do if he blocks. And then Buzzard, yeah, actually, I like that play. Now we can Buzzard and Bloodseeker. Yeah, that feels really good. Double Gin. Okay, so if we consuming ashes, actually, let's if we murder one of them, then we'll still have four mana left over. We could murder plus consuming ashes and just push. Although honestly, if these things trade, I'm totally fine with it. We're not pushing that much damage. I, maybe it's better to just go for free strider here. I guess we can also use skullduggery. to trade for Bloodseeker, but it's kind of like, it's not exactly a two for one. Hmm. Yeah, I think we just attack with the Buzzard and the Plunderer. Pushing for eight, sure. So now we can murder the paladin. I guess let's start there. Then we can Consuming Ashes, one of the Gin of Fool's Fall. And then also attack. Yeah, I kind of like that. Bother tapped out. Oh, does this only happen once per turn? Oh, well. Take the fall. Is this thing an outlaw? No. Sure. I thought we could untap these two again. 
So many gins. Good lord. Alright, so we just full send. Use our Skullduggery. He's taking three, six, eight, ten. Yep, got there. So many gins. Six and one, final boss. Opening hand looks great. Bandit into plunderer. We just want to go Plunderer here. We could also go like Varmint plus Plot the Buzzard, which wouldn't be terrible. Then we could Consuming Ashes the next turn, have this come in as a little bit larger. Otherwise we just Vault Plunderer and then we can threaten the trade. Yeah, I kind of like being a little bit more mana efficient here. pretty powerful so he's gonna get like a ton of land it's an absurd amount of land we could also smuggle a surprise for four here or for three I don't necessarily want to use the Consuming Ashes. This is like a pretty small target. So maybe we just play the Buzzard as a 2-1. Yeah, I think, I think maybe we hold a little bit here. We're just not pushing for that much damage is the thing. Okay, now that we've got two, maybe we just do it. Oh, well, the creature has to die. Because consuming ashes exiles, it doesn't actually kill it, so it's not, <laughs> doesn't work for Buzzard. <laughs> oh, dance. Oh, dance is hilarious here. This is amazing. <laughs> this is like a 9-9. Nine, nine. Oh, God. Lord in heaven. Okay. Throw from the saddle does work, though. And if we tap the bandit, then we can get enough mana to do that and consuming ashes. Okay, so the play here is we...
Do we have any mounts? No. I guess we could do it on our varmint. So a varmint can attack through their 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, I guess let's do that, so. Actually, if we do it on the Vault Plunderer. Then we could potentially use Smuggler Surprise, but oh well, it's fine. I think we're just consuming ashes here. Yeah, I guess we could have pushed a little bit more damage if we put in the Varmint. I was thinking we'd have the mana for, like, Smuggler Surprise, but... So we missed a couple points of damage there. Missed two points. But keeping the Varmint around is actually decent in case they have, like, artifacts. So now I think we just Smuggler's Surprise. You could do it for six. Don't have quite enough to do it for the whole amount. I think we, yeah, we need two more lands in order to like put them into play. But I think maybe we can just do it for three and that's probably good enough. I don't really want to use Consuming Ashes on their lookout. I just don't think it's good enough. I think let's just do this for three. Okay, so now we can go ahead and Bloodseeker plus entertainer we can also use our varmint to get back our buzzard if we want to Yeah, I think let's attack with Bloodseeker. Actually, now that we have Bloodseeker, maybe we do want a Consuming Ashes. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm just going to hold it, though, because like in case they've got a Crazy Bomb. Okay, so now I think I can Varmint and get back the Buzzard. Although I can do that on, on their turn also. I don't have to do it now. Oh god, Dust Animus. That's a beating. I'm glad we held on to our consuming ashes. Whew. So I think this works.
don't need another bandit, but I will take a paladin. Let's see what they got. Ooh, unfortunate accident is super nice. All right, and they scooped. Woo, we got there. Seven and one. Yeah, I think this deck was really great, actually. Um, Triple Consuming Ashes, we had uh, Unfortunate Accident, Smuggler Surprise was amazing, Desert's Do, Double Bandit, and just like a bunch of solid creatures in Murder. Um, yeah, the Buzzard was actually pretty good, I actually have to say. The Free Starter Commandos were just amazing. And then Throw, throw From the Saddle, the, the Paladins were incredible. Yeah, super happy with this deck. There's the sweet prizes. All right, we will see you guys for the next one. And uh, thanks for watching again. You guys are awesome.